Hey guys, we're going to talk about my Cox genealogy, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also have a couple of other trees in here. Well, one other uh, tree in here. Now, before I go over the tree, I have... <clears throat> That's... Junket. Okay. The meaning of the name. Where the Cox surname came from. Um, the male bird, the cock, was often used as a nickname to describe the natural pertness of boys, like the habits of a strutting fowl. Both swaggered and both could crow. <laughs> It became the general name for a forward. Oh, that's Colin. Got it. Okay, I'm back. He's going to come and check it out. Um, he said it's connected to the one in the basement. So he thinks maybe the furnace did a backfire and set the one in the basement off, set her off. And there are, all the ones in the common areas are connected to each other. And I said to him, I said, I realize now what a stupid thing it was to open that door with the fire alarm going off on the other side of it, not knowing what was on the other side of it. You know, there could have been smoke pouring out his apartment for all I knew. He said, well, you could slam it shut pretty quick. I said, yeah, and run out the other door. <laughs> so he's going to come in and take a look. Um, the surname has some resources on the internet. Um, Excuse me. Which, if you are, as with most Christian names, a final S was frequently added, and quite often this was combined with a CK. Or spelt with an X. And the word was sometimes attached to Christian names such as Hancock, Wilcox. Spellings such as Cox, C-O-C-K, and Cox, C-O-C-K-E continued, but the Cox, C-O-X spelling of the surname had begun to establish itself by the 15th century. That's my spelling. Um, other origins of the name have been suggested, and these may have been applicable in certain geographic areas. Uh, the earliest... Cox, C-O-C-K-E-S, line began with Walter D. Chelworth in Kent, England, back in the 13th century. I'm not going to go through them all, but basically, uh, okay, in America, the early C-O-X spelling in America could be C-O-C-K-E or C-O-X-E. In Ireland, and Scotland, um, the one in Scotland was Dutch, the one in Ireland was Captain Richard Cox, there's way more here, but I'm not going to read it all, And um, I will tell you <coughs> about the um, more famous Coxes. Richard Cox, C-O-C-K-S, was an early English trader for the East India Company in Japan. The East India Company was the company where they got their spices from. Because most of the spices in the world, not herbs, herbs are leaves, Stems, stuff that goes above ground, more or less. Um, spices are berries, seeds, um, in case of nutmeg and nut, um, roots. Those types of things are grown primarily over there. 
So they had to get um, <coughs> so they set up the East India Company. But at the same time, another country, and I forget if it was, I think it was Dutch, the Dutch East India Company also sort of cut them off, sort of a war of the water. Um, William Cox was a pioneer settler and road builder in Australia, spelled C-O-X. Richard Cox, spelled C-O-X, was the originator of the Cox Orange Pippin Apple in Berkshire, England in 1825. James Cox, C-O-X, was governor of Ohio and championed, oh, and campaigned on the Democratic ticket for the presidency in 1920. Archibald Cox was U.S. Solicitor General and later special prosecutor to investigate the Watergate scandal. <laughs> now, how many Coxes are there today? <coughs> in the United Kingdom, there are 93,000, mostly in Oxfordshire. In the United States, there are 108,000, mostly in Texas. I would have thought mostly in Maine. Um, 55,000 elsewhere, mostly Canada. So, they kind of stuck to their English speaking area, so to speak. Um, I'm going to put this back in here. Um, this is my Cox family. My Cox family came from England, <coughs> ended up in Massachusetts and Vinyl Haven, Maine, which was called Fox Island at the time, um, because Let's see. Um, <laughs> our first tragedy happened in 1840 in Maine. Uh, Hugh Cox drowned. He was with his father and brother, Amos, and they had returned from a long ship voyage and were tying up in the harbor when he slipped from the gangplank. He was 18. So that means if he was 18 in 1840, he was born in Shortly after that, they moved inland to the area now called Jay and Dixfield. <coughs> um, Mary Lawrence will find British royalty. Sir Robert Lawrence of Lancashire was knighted. Okay, so that was like her great great something grandfather. Um, but John Cox was the first one that came to the U.S. Um, in my life. He was, oh no, he was born in Fox Island, Vinyl Haven, Maine. He died before 1850. He married Mary Lawrence on 5 July 1780 in Medway, Norfolk, Massachusetts. They went a long way to get married. Daughter of Amos Lawrence and Hannah Daniels. She was born 1796 in Warren, Maine. Um, okay, so their parents were born in England. <coughs> so why the heck did they go all the way down to Medway, Massachusetts to get married? Um, now, understand that at that time, Maine and Massachusetts were the same state. It was all Massachusetts. 
that being said, it's still a long haul from where they were to Medway, Mass., especially considering they had to do it on a horse and buggy. <laughs> You're not talking today where it might take three hours. Well, from Medway, it might take about four. Um, I think it's about an hour from here. Maybe less. Might be 30 to 45 minutes, but either way, it's going to take you approximately four hours if you're in middle Maine, the J area, because um, it's going to take you that long from here easily. Um, maybe five, depending on traffic. So if it's going to take you between four and six hours by automobile on a modern highway. So I can't imagine how long it took them by horse and buggy on not so modern roads in 1870. So, yeah, there must have been a reason. Um, Hold on, what? Did I do something wrong here? Oh, holy dyslexia, Batman. They married in 1780, not 1870. <laughs> oh my god. I'm like, how could they get married? Oh, I know why, because I read it wrong. Oh, it's 1780. Oh boy. That's funny. Excuse me. Um, so that's even worse. Can you imagine in 1780? <coughs> they were coming from Vinyl Haven, which is, or what was called Fox Island then, which is on the water, but it's still a hell of a journey, especially back then. And here we go. Now, their children were, uh, Asa, Anne, Mary Jane, Margaret, and William Bentley. William Bentley was my direct um, ancestor. <coughs> <coughs> He married Harriet Satira, Satira Flag in 1856. different than mine like he comes from a different one of their children so the next generation isn't my direct line but that's fine and my direct line is here I mean <laughs> it's here <laughs> because he like us did all once so it's just that when you do it when it fills it out like in a report like this a descendants report it's gonna fill it out from your direct line <coughs> which the program knows because you've put yourself, your parents, your grandparents in, and so it knows which line is yours. So his line was Oh no, that was Lisa Flag. I'm sorry. I think I missed kids. Oh, I did. John Henry, Hugh, Amos Lawrence, Eben, which is short for Ebenezer, Sarah, and it looks like she married Asa. Yeah, she married Asa. Then Anne married Jane Margaret one day. <coughs> His line is. John Henry. Oh, 
Okay, his line was John Henry. Okay, his line was John Henry. <clears throat> Go to my line because he has them all. That's my mother's handwriting. <laughs> okay, Evan. Okay, right here, William Bentley Cox. <coughs> Camden, Knox County, Maine, or Fox Island, Vinyl Haven. He died in East Dixfield in 1900, married Harriet Flagg uh, in 1856, and Jay. Um, her mother, Mary Coolidge, is actually an ancestor of President Coolidge. Which makes me an ancestor of President Coolidge, a descendant, excuse me, of President Coolidge. <laughs> and I am, I'm a direct descendant of President Coolidge. <laughs> <coughs> and I have proof of that. So, um, let's see. Dee, 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 dee. Okay, they're buried in East Dixfield Cemetery. That's nice to know. Um, census. And these were their kids. Harriet, Eugene, Hattie, Nori, Mary, Bertha, Charles, and Daisy. Nori is my line. And I love descendants reports. They're so much easier to read. Um, and you get back here, and that's it. And all of a sudden, you're in modern times. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, have to take this. Go to my tree and see what I have. Oh, excuse me. Um, I also have this descendants report, which is smaller. This is William Kennedy. Uh, the way this one goes is they started with their person as generation one. Um, and the great 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 grandparents, my third great grandparents, Robert and Margaret ended up generation three because this went backwards. This is an ancestor report. So it goes back to the ancestors instead of a descendants report, which goes forward, which goes from the ancestors forward. This is again an ancestors report which goes backward. So Which written out this way is not a problem. Uh, it just means that his, I believe this is his grandparents, they go back. Interesting information. Then it goes back to Robert and Margaret. And some notes about them. And then you have um, her parents, the best that you know, we could do. So. Unfortunately, one thing you'll find in, in Irish records, um, at least during that time period, is that they didn't put the mother's name. No, I only was in pain for 18 hours. And popped a watermelon out that it's a hole the size of a lemon. 
as, as they said in um, Look Who's Talking, to not have my name appear, <laughs> you know, that's crummy, but it's the way it was done. Oh, my eyes itch. Oh. Oh, excuse me, guys. It's allergy season. It's awful. Mary Lawrence, as we talked about, that Lawrence Townley estate. It wasn't that it was non-existent. It was that it, they misunderstood what it was from what from what I'm gathering from the book. Let me show you the genealogy book that I have. Um, since we're in a book now, let's open this back up with this bag, and I'll show you some of the books that I have. I put them all in here. Um, Where's the other one? The, the tall one. Which I think is down here. Yep, here it is. Okay, guys. Let me show you all my books related to genealogy. This is um <laughs> a lot. Ugh. How am I doing on time here? 20 minutes, that's not too bad. Um, let me show you all my books for the end of junior holiday. The Dyers, which we talked about. There's my great grandma. Um, History of the Lawrence Townley and Chase Townley Estates in England. Um, this is very interesting, actually. He, um, there's even places for you to put notes. Um, got the genealogies and everything in it. I bought this in honor of my mother because I knew if my mother saw it, she would buy it in a heartbeat, especially for the price I got it for. So this is called the Classic Reprint series. So I made sure that I got this with copious historical and genealogical notes of the Lawrence Chase and Townley families and much other valuable information. So there's that. There's my genealogy organizer that my friend ordered for me, um, which is awesome. This is called Time and the Town, and it's Douglas's 250th. Um, This is, it's beautiful. So, there's that. Then there's this one, which is the town that my father's family was from. This one's kind of, because of the way it was bound, kind of falling apart. Um, I also have this one, Looking Back, Historic Images of North Central Connecticut. Um, it's Windsor, East Windsor, South Windsor, and Windsor Locks. So there's East Windsor in here. Um, and this is actually a really nice book. It's beautiful. Beautifully illustrated. Just absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at this. Look at the golden writing in there. It's just stunning. And this one that Lisa bought me. I actually started working on this one. Um, I don't have a husband, so 
Um, but these are my parents. And This is my dad. Oh, and I should have written Roger. I wrote Bob and Skip, but I didn't write Roger. <laughs> what a dummy. I need to fix that error of my ways. in a car wreck that almost killed my dad and had my baby brother been born my um, baby brother's name would have been Roger so It's funny because it's so hard to do this when they're both gone, you know? And this, this is my, my sister. So very little. Uh, your other close relatives, I haven't really done much of. Maternal grandmother, that's that's um, Granny. You know, it's funny. It's funny. Under Aunt Maud, I just wrote, you know, they asked children. Oh, seven. <laughs> I'm Mary. I did John Schmidt and Charles Mitchell. German. Um. Because they're both my grandfather. Angelina Hemingway. David, Ida, Josephine. Her siblings. Um, family characteristics. She spoke French. Kanuki, 1912, born right here. My grandfather, Robert Bob Wilson, born in Broadbrook, Connecticut. He was said to be a gentleman. He believed you took your hat off when you walked in the house. He believed, or any building. He, even though he wasn't the nicest man, he instilled those qualities in his boys. My Uncle David wouldn't dream of walking in here without taking his hat off. He wouldn't dream of not holding a door for a lady. And he instilled that in his boys. Um, not quite the same way his father did, but he would gently biff him on the back of the head and say, Hey, open that, hold that door for your aunt and your cousin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Mr. 
your grandfather was a ballroom dancer and quite a pool shark. <laughs> quite a trick shot in pool. Um, his sister Florence, his brother James, his sister Mabel, his brother Bill, and all their kids. <laughs> My great grandparents. Okay, I, I messed it up, so I had to uh, fix it. Because I just assumed maternal would be first, and it wasn't. So, yeah, this is interesting. Um, again, it's got a husband's tree in it, but that's okay. Whatever. Um, so, yeah, I want to take a look through this. Let me keep this out. Um, let me keep that out. Yeah, I do. And... Mm, these are going back. Actually, these should stay out too. <laughs> I know it's a lot. Um, there. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I need a notebook and start taking notes. In these two in particular. Excuse me. Well, maybe no, I want to make copies, and there's no reason to. Oh, here are her notes. My mother bought this one. And I knew if she had seen this one, she would have bought it. She would have read it in about half hour, 45 minutes. This one is, I think, she finished. But this one's so small that she would have read it very quickly. And if I actually sat down and read it, only 107 pages, for gosh sakes. I could read it very quickly. And this is Time in the Town. There's, a, like I said, Douglas. The little engine that couldn't. Ooh, looks like we had a derailment. The little engine that couldn't. Ouch! <laughs> um, it's funny because nobody got hurt. They were trying to put earth into a train and it was too much. And yeah, the whole bridge broke and it was horrible. Um, The Southern New England Railroad, known locally as the Grand Trunk. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to read this book. <laughs> anyway, thank you for joining me. I still think the title is not funny. I don't imagine that could be. <laughs> and that we have that picture of the historical society. Um, so, I'll have to ask about that tomorrow. <laughs> the little engine that couldn't. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> that strikes me funny bone. Anyway, 
thank you for uh, joining me. And God bless you. <laughs> oh, I'm still laughing. Excuse me. <coughs> um, please subscribe if you're new or if you've seen a few videos and you like what you see. Because we're trying to get to 100 subscribers by August 4th. Thank you so much. I will see you tomorrow. Bye, guys.